As I'm sure you know, moving images are created with multiple still images. Exactly how many still images or frames are taken in the camera is known as frames per second. The usual number of frames per second for films is around 24 or 25. Fewer frames than this would appear jittery and movements wouldn't look as smooth as they should. More frames than this would simply mean you would be getting more images captured in one second and therefore give clearer, more defined movements. High frame rates can also be used to slow the footage down in the edit. If you captured 24 frames per second in camera and slowed this down to play back over two seconds in the edit, there wouldn't be enough frames to make the image look natural and smooth in playback. Therefore, if you plan to slow the footage down, you need to have the appropriate amount of frames per second captured in camera. For example, if you filmed 100 frames per second and spread this out across four seconds in the edit, then the frames per second in playback would be 25. Doing this would make the footage four times slower than watching it in real time. If you filmed 10,000 frames per second, you would be able to play back the footage 400 times slower than real time. The more frames per second you capture in camera, the slower you can play it back in the edit. However, the more frames that are captured, the more light is needed to capture them. This can be balanced out by adjusting the ISO, iris, or by simply using bigger lights. Another element to consider is the shutter. When we talk about shutter angles, this refers to when things are shot on film and there is a physical disc as the shutter, the angle of which could be manually changed. Some digital cameras do also have a physical shutter, although it is designed differently and is more of a rectangle shape. For most digital video cameras, there isn't a physical shutter. It's more of a shutter effect created by the camera's sensor, but the term shutter angle is still used to describe the effect caused, as well as the equally used term, shutter speed. Shutter angle, or speed, affects exposure and motion blur. The angle refers to how much of the shutter is open, and therefore how long one single frame is exposed to light for. When the angle of the shutter is decreased, this reduces the motion blur of a moving object because it's captured faster. However, as a result of this, the light reaching the image will be lessened. As a general rule, you want to have a shutter angle of 180 degrees. This is half the shutter disc and is the most common shutter angle to use. The equivalent of this in shutter speed terms would be one over double the frame rate. For example, if the frame rate is 25 frames per second, then the shutter speed will be 1 over 50. This means 1 50th of a second. If you increase the frames per second to 50, then the shutter speed will be 1 hundredth of a second. The way digital sensors create a shutter effect without a real shutter is by activating the photosites on the sensor like a switch either being on or off. This way, it can simulate the length of time a physical shutter would have been open for. A rolling shutter means that the photosites are activated from top to bottom or side to side. This technique can sometimes give unusual effects, like the jello effect. On the other hand, the newer global shutter doesn't have this problem because all of the photo sites are switched on at the same time. This way the motion blur can still be regulated, but you don't get any distortion as a side effect. The sensor needs to convert light into digital information. This can either be achieved with a CCD sensor or a CMOS sensor. CCD sensors work by sending the charge from the photo sites one row at a time and takes them to a chip elsewhere to be converted into information. CMOS sensors are designed differently. 
Instead of converting information elsewhere in rows, each photo site has its own tiny converter next to it on the sensor. The downside to this is that more noise is accumulated on the image because of this. However, it is the cheaper sensor design to have. On the other hand, CCD sensors are more expensive, but create higher quality, low noise images. Thanks for watching. Like this video if you found it useful, and we'll see you next time.